Many years ago, I decided to visit all families within the boundaries of my parish. I was new to the community and I wanted to get to know the people I was sent to. Also, I was keen to pray with them and bless their homes. One day, I couldn't find a house I was supposed to visit. After some time of driving around, I got lost and had to give up. Somehow, I found the way back to the presbytery. I picked up the map that I forgot to take with me and eventually I visited the family an hour later. If you are a younger person and wonder why I didn't use my mobile phone to show me the way, I need to tell you that there were no smartphones with GPS available at the time. I know, it's hard to believe. Brothers and sisters, without knowing where we are going, we feel lost. Today's first reading from the book of Exodus tells us about the Ten Commandments. They are the very roots of our faith and the summary of the covenant between God and his people. The chosen nation was asked to live according to them. Today, they are for us like a map or GPS to help us to stay safe on the way of life. By living according to them, we will surely reach our final destination, a house built by God for us in heaven. We are called to follow God's commandments not out of fear, but out of love. Why? Because they were given to us by our loving Heavenly Father, who knows what is the best for us. These laws don't constrain us, but they give us the key that opens the door to a life of true freedom. Jesus taught us to look at the life of faith and our relationship with God from a positive angle. He even wanted us to call his father Abba, which in the Aramaic language means daddy. A loving dad will not give his children what is bad for them. So, similarly, we can confidently expect from God only good things. In the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians, we read that Christ is the power and the wisdom of God. We saw that power of God in the Bible many times, when Jesus performed different miracles, including the greatest of all, raising from the dead. He predicted his own resurrection when he said to the Jews, destroy this sanctuary and in three days I will raise it up. As for Jewish people, the temple was a place of worship. For us, Christ's mystical body is a new sanctuary. We live in his presence and worship God in a new house of prayer, his church. Through the grace of baptism, we pray in spirit and in truth. We are able to call God Abba, Father, without any fear or hesitation, because the Holy Spirit bears witness to our spirit that we are children of God and heirs of God with Christ. Such a great honor. Even though we are weak and sometimes make mistakes, Jesus knows our good intentions. Today's Gospel finishes with a very clear message that Christ knows our thoughts and everything about us. So let us never be disheartened. However, if it happens that we make a bad choice in life, let us repent and move on. Dear friends, if we have the nerve to break God's commandments, we should also have strength and humility to renew our Christian way of life as soon as possible after committing a sin. The sacrament of reconciliation is always available to us. The season of Lent is about correcting our spiritual compasses. It is about coming back to the right road if we have gone astray. It is about renewing our decision to follow the signs the Lord has given us 
through his commandments and the teaching of the church. May the prayer our Father offered to us by Jesus be a part of our daily spiritual routine, remembering that God is truly our Daddy, who loves us and who wants us all not to be lost, but to reach the most important destination, eternal life.